as you can see this, this the history of the actual box is a little bit complicated i will slow down uh thank you paulina now i will slow down even more uh i will slow down even because i the, it might be not that obvious for you remember we have um initial endowment of the first good gentleman a has six unit has got six unit and gentleman b two units so the total is eight so we measure good number one here this is the good number one and we've had eight units we have also good number two the gentleman a has four units and the gentleman b two units and the total amount is six so we have two goods and two guys and this box tells us the total endowment of the first good and the second good okay and we will discuss the, the allocation of these goods uh i wanted to say if you as you remember but you probably don't remember when i discussed chapter nine the story was that the gentleman enters the market with the initial allocation we use the example of uh, apples and bottles of beer the, the gentleman entered the market with some initial endowment he trades and then he leaves the market and so now we we start the story and before he trade he has got the initial endowment we have two people so they have the initial endowment so let us uh, let us see here this initial endowments we have gentleman a here Gentleman A has his endowment uh, is six units of the first good and four units of the of the second good. The total supply, the total endowment of of the first good is A. Gentleman A has got six unit out of, of this eight, so this is six. This is four out of six. And this is the initial endowment. This is uh, the initial endowment of A. Uh, we want to have, as we have only two guys, we can show the same story. We can tell the same story from gentleman B. Gentleman B is located here and if if he is here then he has zero if he moves down then his endowment of the second goods goes up and he moves so he he stands here if he at him he has two and two so we measure his endowment of the first good here and the second good here and he has got two units of the first good and the two units of the second good and this is the initial allocation of these two guys so they enter the market and a has got six and four and b has got two and two and they are here and let me change oh, oh oops let me change the color. I like red. Okay, this is more generally, but let's let us skip this more general story. Okay. Okay, we will talk what is feasible and what is not feasible. Uh, from the perspective of gentleman A. Uh, Gentleman A, this is endowment. Oops, this is Omega. 
one. This is omega 2a. This is what I am gentleman a. This is what I have. Can I be here? Yes, because here I have less of the first good and less of the second good. OK, so I as a gentleman a can move from here to here. Do I like the movement from the green to yellow? No, but it's possible. This is also possible. So any movement from green to yellow is feasible. Uh, now let us look what I would prefer. I will slow down. Uh, this green line, this is what? Do you remember what is the, the name of this green curve? This is a utility function. Uh, this is not the utility function, but not not that far from the utility function. On this line, on this curve, utility is constant. How do we call the curve or the line? Where in each point the utility is constant? Indifference curve. Yes, this is the indifference curve. This is the indifference curve, uh, bingo. And so we would prefer to have more of X1 and X2. We assume that the more, the more the better. So that means we assume our preferences are well behaved. Uh, do you have to remember that these are the well behaved preferences? No. I will not ask you from the principles of microeconomics. I will ask you to answer the to solve the problems and to understand the logic. Because we're discussing this because first of all, I like this and the second we will uh, use this to understand better the efficiency when dis while discussing taxes. OK, this is then gentleman B again. This is the indifference curve. The more the better. What? we do now is we flip this and I like this so I do this three times we flip gentleman B uh, so zero is here when we are here we have zero of the first good and zero of the second when we move this way or that way we have more of this or that good but if we move down or left or southwest, the, we we reach the higher and higher indifference curve. We are better and better off. So we would prefer to move either down or left or down and left. These were the preferences of gentleman A. These are the preferences of gentleman B. Let's let us add these two graphs. What I did, look, I turned the graph for gentleman B. Oops. I added this to the diagram for gentleman A. And what I get is the edge word box. So this is the edge word box. So here you can see the, the story for two guys having the initial endowment here. This is the initial endowment. This is the initial endowment and we can analyze the story. We can analyze simultaneously the story of two goods and two consumers. Do you know what is Pareto improving? What is Pareto efficiency? Do you remember this? Pareto efficiency. Mm, yes. Okay. 
Uh, Paulina remembers excellent, but if you don't remember, let me tell you that par if a situation is Pareto efficient, it means you cannot improve the situation of anyone, uh, not decreasing the utility of at least one person. Whoops, what does it mean? If the situation is Pareto efficient, if one person is better off, then another one must be worse off. This means that if one person is better off, just a second, just a second. Excuse me, excuse me. Sorry, this is the beauty of, 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 of teaching at home. Uh, if a situation is pirate efficient, I cannot, or one cannot improve the welfare without decreasing the welfare of other guys. Uh, what is Pareto improvement? Pareto improvement. Oops. Pareto improvement is a situation where we can increase the welfare of at least one person without decreasing the welfare of other guys. So definitely Pareto improvement is a nice story because no one, no one is worse off, but at least one person is better off, or maybe two person, maybe all of us are better off. Okay, so let us look, let us search if we can increase the welfare of at least one guy without decreasing the welfare of other guys. So let us search for Pareto improving allocations. Pareto improving allocation, that is allocation that are better for at least one guy and not worse for others or uh, better for all guys. When you look at this diagram and when you remember that for the green guy, when we move, oh fuck, when we move this direction, the, the gentleman A is better off and for B, when we move this direction, he's better off. Can we find another allocation which is better for both of them? Can we find a point here in the Edgeward box that is better for A and B simultaneously? Come on. Maybe this cross? <clears throat> Maybe what? Maybe this cross of green and uh, pink line. Look, uh, this upper cross. Let me point C and point D. Uh, do we have Dominica Ma Makrak with us? Dominica, are you with us? No. What about Deep? Deep, are you with us? No. What about Pavlo? Yes. Oh, excellent. Pavlo, you are gentleman A. So this is Pavlo. Uh, do we have Laura with us? Yes, I'm here. OK, Laura, you are B. So Laura uh, is not gentleman B, Laura is Woman B, consumer B. Mm. Whoops, I uh, bad quality. The sound quality is bad. Can you hear me, by the way? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, the question to Pavlo. This is 
the, the starting point is E. But someone tells you, what about D? Instead of being at E and having omega 1 and omega 2, you can be at D and having a little bit less of the first good and more of the second one. Are you better off, worse off, indifferent, or you cannot tell? You mm -hmm. have to choose between D and E. I think D is better. Yes, so again, microeconomics, bundle D is preferred over bundle E. It's directly preferred over bundle. Oh, okay, uh, Laura, uh, if you are to choose between E and D, which one you prefer? Uh, may I say that I'm Erasmus student and I'm not from economics, so literally I'm dying seeing this. <laughs> Whoa, you're not economics. Whoops, that's, that's a big. Whoops, sorry, sorry. I'm from Long. Whoa, <laughs> oh, that, 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 I mean, these two lectures. I mean, this one and the next one, that would be a real challenge for you. Later would be easier because we will use a simple economics, but this is a little, this is intermediate microeconomics. Do we have Vladislava with us? Do we have Kirill? Yes, I'm here. Uh, ah, Kirill. Okay, thank you, Kirill. So, Gabriel, uh, you have to choose between bundle E and bundle D. Which one you would prefer? I would prefer bundle E. E, because this is on a higher indifference curve than this one. So for that was that was for A, but for B, B prefers E over D. Okay, so when we move from E to D, Pavlo is better off, but Kirill is worse off, so this is not Pareto improvement. Let us look at C. Again, the question to Pavlo, when you have to choose between C and E, you prefer what? Mm, e. E is better for you or C? Yes. Maybe it's C. It's on the high end difference. Yeah, it's the high end difference. Yes, curve. look, look, look. This is the indifference curve that goes through C. You would prefer C. C is directly preferred over E. And Kirill, would you prefer E or C? C. C. C is directly preferred over E. So look, when we move from E to C, both guys are better off. This is Pareto improvement. So the Can set. You come back. I have yes. one question. Yeah, and why here at the point B, E is preferable over D? Uh, uh, say again, why, why, which point? In point B, here between the top. Yeah, E is preferable over D. For Kirill? Yes. Look. Uh, this is the indifference curve for Kirill that goes. Wait, wait, wait. Let me change colors. Let me change colors. Uh, good question. OK. Uh, wow, 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 wow. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Just a second. Eraser. Pen, colors, green, uh, green is pop for Pavlo. OK, so no doubt that this is the higher indifference curve. And for for Kirill, we will use red because I don't have pink here. And for Kirill, 
Kettle starts from, from here. So this is the story for Kettle. We've got uh, D here. And we've got E here. As you can see, E is on a higher indifference curve. The indifference curve that goes through bundle E. This is the higher indifference curve because for Kirill, we start from this. Maybe we should, you should return. Remember, this is the story for Kirill. Mm -hmm. But we flipped, we flipped this. Okay. Um, I like this. By the way, if you prepare the presentation, if you like animation to the presentation, I give you additional point for this. If you prefer, if you prepare scientific presentation, and if you add a lot of movements and flying letters, etc., this is a disaster. But if you prepare a presentation for me, you can add. Okay, so what is the conclusion? Uh, whatever is located here. in this lab, uh, lens shape area, this is Pareto improvement allocations. Why? So when I move, when we move from bundle E, the initial bundle, to any bundle located here inside this, uh, both guys are better off. What if we move from E to bundle Z? We move from bundle E to bundle Z. Is movement from E to Z Pareto improvement or not? Is movement from E to Z Pareto improvement or not? Only for one? No. Okay, we have two answers only for one. One answer. No, no, it's not a Pareto efficient because uh, only uh, only like uh, player A will benefit from that, but for player B it will be still the same. Okay. Uh, your explanation, the story you said is correct. Sorry, uh, the story you said is correct. It's true that, as you said, uh, movement from A to Z is beneficial for A because he moves on a higher indifference curve. This is true. Uh, I think it was Paulina who said that this is Pareto improvement only for one guy. Yes, yes for A. This is this is true. But when we when we are to decide is it Pareto improvement or not, you have to remember the definition. Mm -hmm. A Pareto improvement is a situation in which someone is better off comma, but no one is worse off. So utility of at least one guy goes up, but no one suffers. Movement from A to Z. Does this satisfy this definition or not? Someone better off, true? Yes. No Is one worse off? Not true. Why? Who is worse off? Me. Is B worse off at point Z? Yes, because wait, wait. E is better for him. No, no, no. Uh, maybe my my diagram is not very precise. Oh, that, that, that's the story. Point Z is located on the, on B's indifference curve. Ah, oh, okay, okay. So then B is indifferent, so he is not worse off. Exactly. I think that is part efficient. Uh, movement from A to Z was Pareto improvement. Yes. Because one better off, no one worse off. Yes. And when we are here, we will discuss if it's Pareto efficient or not. We will discuss it in, in a second. Okay, okay, okay. Let me enlarge this area. Is this Pareto improvement? Movement from pink to orange? Yes. Yes. Look, both guys are better off. Each of them 
is on a higher indifference curve. A moves from this to that, B moves from this to that. Is the pink point here, is the situation here Pareto efficient? Pareto efficient means we can't do anything. What does it mean we can't do anything? If we do something, at least one guy will be better off, but other, but someone else will be worse off. Pareto efficient means we can't do Pareto improvement. When we are here and uh, sorry, that was uh, that was a that, that was an orange. When we are at an orange, is this allocation Pareto efficient? No, actually, can increase. Yes, this is not Pareto efficient because we can do Pareto improvement. Where? In this red area, if we if we find if we move from uh, orange to this red area, our efficiency will go up. Not efficiency, sorry. Our the happiness of at least one guy will go up, whereas the happiness that is the utility of the of the other guy will not go down. Uh, we reach this point. Movement from orange to white. Is this a Pareto improvement? Yes. Yes. OK, we reached the um, white point. Is this Pareto, is this point Pareto optimal? Is this a par, is this Pareto optimum? Yes. Yes. Yes, because uh, there is no trade anymore. Okay, they can trade, but trade would mean that one will be worse off, whereas the other better off. But remember, trade, this is a voluntary exchange between two guys. Why do people trade? Because after the trade, both are better off. When they are here at, the, at this white point, with the green dot, they cannot trade anymore. Why? Because uh, here we've got the, the magic tangency. We will use this magic tangency for economics. This tangency when the marginal rate of substitution, blah blah blah. This is this is a, this is a peanut for you. For lawyers, that may be oops a little bit more complicated. Hey, okay, this is what we discussed a year ago. For B, uh, for A, A would prefer to move this direction. B would prefer to move this direction. But uh, if we are moving this direction, this is good for A, but this is bad for B and vice versa. If we move to the left or to the right, uh, this is worse for both of them. This allocation is Pareto optimal. Okay, we need, we will need this uh, to some extent to discuss taxes, uh, but this is definitely when you want, when you claim, okay, I studied microeconomics, I'm an economist, you have to know what is Pareto optimality and what is Pareto improvement. OK. Do you need this knowledge in real life? No. Do you need this knowledge to discuss advanced economics? Yes. So when you study, when you continue uh, your MA here at Lazarsky or somewhere abroad, I mean, from, for, for some of you, Poland is also abroad, but if you uh, I don't want, I, I, I don't know if most of students, but at least some students used to study in the West. And definitely studying economics in the West, you would discuss Pareto optimality, no doubt. 
um, let us look for all parameter optimal allocations. Okay, let me change the color. Uh, right, we are here at initial initial endowment. Mm. Let us look at this and this. K. Is the allocation at K? Is this Pareto optimum? Is it Pareto optimal? Is this allocation Pareto optimal at K? What do you think? No. Why? Like because uh, A has a lot of some goods while the B is not. It's like the minimum is uh, his minimum uh, utility curve. OK, definitely if the question is. Is uh, A better off at K than at E. What is the answer to this question? A would prefer E or K? K. K. K is on a high indifference curve. B would prefer E to K because K is on a lower indifference curve. That's true. But the question is, is point K instead of bundle K? Is the allocation K? Is it Pareto optimal? <laughs> yes. Like you mean uh, no way to um, make Pareto improvement? Yes. Yeah, in that case, yes. it's efficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Pareto optimality is a different thing. Pareto optimality is not linked with fairness, justice, and the thing like this. Pareto optimality means we cannot trade. We cannot trade meaning we cannot improve the situation without decreasing the utility of someone else this is this pareto optimality means only this so all these allocations were in different curve attention to each other to each other these are the pareto optimal allocations definitely we had allocation k and allocation gamma here Definitely, there is a big difference between K and Gamma. There's a big difference when we look from the perspective of consumer A and B. But when you look from the perspective of the economy, there's no difference. Both bundles, both points, both allocations are Pareto optimal. OK, we as a society may prefer, suppose that this is um, Suppose this gentleman A is very in, is a genius. He is a genius, whereas B is lazy idiot. Well, we, we would say, wow, K is better. This genius who works hard and invents a lot of uh, uh, a lot of useful things, and uh, I don't know. He he works on the medicine on coronavirus. Whereas B is just drinking wine and vodka and does nothing. Uh, we would say, well, this is better than this. Let us leave the furnace and uh, discussion like this. Let us focus only on whether the situation is Pareto optimal or not. Both Gamma and K, they are Pareto optimal. If we join this point, we get something which is known as a contract curve. Do you have to remember the definition of the contract curve? No. Will I ask you to draw the contract curve? No. Will I ask you to derive the contract curve and write me the, the equation, the function for this? No, so don't worry. When you want to study economics, it's good to know what does it, what it, you have to know what is Pareto efficiency. It's good to know what is the contract curve. 
Okay, I added something. We still have time. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, maybe I because I have this one by one bargaining. I have the, the, the additional presentation when I discuss this step by step. Um, we will return to this in a second. The core. The core. Uh, this is the core. This is the part of the contract curve that is not blocked by anyone. OK, here. They will end up here, somewhere here on the core. What is the core? This is the part of the contact curve that is superior to each of them. The definition is here. Do you have to remember the definition now? So when we start at bundle E, the initial bundle, and we allow them to trade, they will reach the core. They will reach the solution which is located on the core. Okay, now this this actioner. Oh, this actioner. Okay, so we are here. We've got in, we got gentleman A and gentleman B. We have perfect competition. They realize that um, initial allocation is not the best one. There, there may be Pareto improvement. And we ask the auctioneer, because we, we have this is the market economy, we have prices. So we ask the auctioneer to suggest prices so that they can trade. OK, this is the initial endowment. These are the prices, by the way, do you remember that the slope of this is P1 uh, over P2. So the slope of the budget, that's the budget line. The slope of the budget line tells you minus, tells you I mean, the prices, they tell you the slope of the budget line, so they tell you, the slope tells you at which ratio are you going to exchange good one for good two and vice versa. Uh, here, you will sell the first good and you will purchase the second good. Again, chapter nine variant, so you are net seller of the first good, you are net buyer of the of the second good. Uh, when we look for the, from the perspective of the gentleman B, gentleman B will purchase the the second uh, the first good and sell the first one. Okay, in general equilibrium, uh, the the endowment are fixed. And what what gentleman A sells has to be equal to what gentleman B buys, and and the same story for for the first good and, and the second good. Uh, suppose that auctioner sets prices like this. So this is the budget line and it goes through this point. So the auctioner suggests prices for the first good and the prices for the second good. Uh, you start trading. And if you don't remember. 
this is what we discussed a year and four months ago, that the, the best choice for the consumer is where the price ratio, the slope of a budget line is equal to marginal rates of substitution and marginal rates of substitution. This is the slope of the budget line at the point. Uh, we had Pavlo here and Kirill. Yes, Pavlo. Am I right, Pavlo and Kirill? Yeah. Yes. OK, Pavlo, uh, when you face. OK, let us start with Kirill. Usually we start with Pavlo, but let us start with Kirill. No, no, let's start with Pablo because that's easier. For Pablo, it's easier because you sh you, sh you remember, you should remember this graph where we have good one and we have good two, and this is the indifference curve and the like. So Pablo, uh, you start here at your initial endowment. You face the this wine budget line. Is, is the choice here Call this by epsilon. Are you better off at epsilon than at initial endowment? Mm, yes. Yes, okay. True. Is uh, when you face the wide budget line, is epsilon the best choice? Mm. Anyone can help? Anyone no, can ask? No. No, you're right. Why? Because this is not true that the that the slope of budget line is not the same as the slope of the indifference curve. Those lines are not tangent. And the same story for Kirill. Kirill, are you better off or worse off at epsilon? I like uh, indifferent because you're indifferent. You're yes. The best. Yes, you're right. You're right. You are completely indifferent. But look, let us return to Pavlo. Pavlo will not stop at epsilon. Pavlo would prefer to be here. This was E. That was our epsilon, and Pavlo gets to say eta. Why? Because at eta. At, e, at eta, the slope of the indifference curve is the same as the slope uh, of the budget line. So what does it mean? If Pavlo faces <clears throat> these prices, Pavlo would be willing to sell this amount of the first good to be able to this amount of the of the of the second good. Let us look from the perspective of of B, of Kirill. Kirill will uh, search for the for the place where the slope of budget line is equal to marginal rate of substitution. So Kirill will be here. Initially, let's uh, as letter big omega. So Keller will be at big omega. So he will be willing to. To what? To. Purchase this. And sell this, this amount. Uh, but we have a problem. We have a problem that uh, in the case of the first good. Uh, they want. Look, this was, uh, this is what Pavlo wants to consume. This is what Kirill wants to consume. Uh, the consumption is lower than the endowment, but when we look at the second good, this is what Kirill wants to consume. This is what Pavlo wants to consume. This is more than the endowment. So we have excess supply of the first good. And excess demand of the second good. So market is not in equilibrium. But in, remember in market economy we have equilibrium. 
uh, because we have excess supply of the first good and excess demand for the second good in market economy, the price of this good will go down and the price of that good will go up. So the slope will change. The slope will change. Ba -ba. And we get this point. And look here. At this point, this is the net. This is the consumption. This is the demand. Of gentleman A for the first good. And for the second good. This is the demand of B for the second. And for the first. And here the demand for the first good is equal. Um, endowment of the first good and the demand for the second is equal to the endowment of the second. The economy is in equilibrium. Ba -ba. The economy is in equilibrium. Okay, and I show you. I st I stop the lecture here. I show you this. Uh, wait. Uh, this, yes, this is the, the this is the auctioner. This is the auctioner. Okay. Okay, and there are only nine slides. Uh, for economies, this should be understandable or either know that probably this is the one of the most sophisticated uh, during this this the tax policy course. For non economists uh, this is difficult. But don't worry, uh, there will be one or two questions on the final exam based on this. So. Those guys who cannot answer this question, they still can pass the exam. So chill. Uh, I have nine slides. I will go through them quite quickly. But I will upload this presentation and you can at home. Go through this step by step. And I will upload the problem set and you can practice. If you are lost, you can go to the presentation. You can go to the textbook. And you can use Google to find using Google. You can find answer to any to any question. OK, we will discuss how the auction year. Works. This is our this is our story. Uh, remember we had the problem that there was an excess supply of good one excess demand for good two. And we didn't have equilibrium, so we needed to change the prices to get the equilibrium. OK, uh, let us use the numerical example. Uh, let us use the numerical example. We have two guys. Uh, what kind of utility functions they have? How do we? What is the name of the utility function of gentleman A? Hello. Are you there? Uh, yes, but I don't understand anything, so. <laughs> OK, thank you. Uh, this lecture disaster, next lecture. At, at this part of the next lecture disaster, then we will discuss some basic stuff, so it won't be that difficult. If you want to be the lawyer, you can also be the tax lawyer. I get a lot of friends, tax lawyers. And it's good to know some micro foundations of of taxes. Other guys, economists. How do we call this utility function? X times Y. Cup Douglas. Yes, this is Cup Douglas. So knowing this, knowing this uh, Cup Douglas utility functions, uh, you can easily calculate. Uh, you can easily calculate uh, the demand for. The first good 
in our case, the first good is X and the second good X, Y. Let's assume that the price of Y is one. If you don't remember, this is a numerator. Numerator, uh, okay, if something is one, this is a numerator. Uh, we will search, we will look at the price of X to clear the market. So let's suppose that the price of X is one. So our prices are PX is one, PY is one. So the ratio is one. So the slope is minus one. So let us check if we have an equilibrium. Okay. How to check this? Uh, we have to we have to calculate the demand for the demand for X and demand for Y of gentleman A. We have to calculate demand for X for B and in this Cobb Douglas function, the demand for X is income divided by one of the two price of X. Why? This is Cobb Douglas. You should remember this. What is the value of what is the income? This is the value of endowment. What is the value of endowment? Gentleman A has got five units of X and five units of Y. Prices are one and one. So the value of endowment for the value of endowment for A is 10. So the demand for X is 10 over 2 because price is 1, so it's 5. And X and Y, A is 5. So gentlemen, A will not, will not want to trade. He's happy with 5 and 5. What about B? Whoops, this is more complicated. For B, the demand for for X would be the, the value of endowment. What is the value of endowment? 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because we have X to power two, in fact, that would be two over three times of X. This is one. So what is his demand for X? 10. Mm -hmm. Demand for Y would be 1 over 3 times 15 over 1. This is 5. OK, so we know that we have calculated. Given the prices, A would like to consume 5 and 5, whereas B would prefer to consume 10 and 5. Uh, what does it mean? A wants to consume 5 of X, B 10, so the total demand for X is 15, oh, but the total supply, total endowment of A is 10. Oops. Problem. Look at B, at, at Y, sorry. They want to consume 10 units, but the supply, the endowment is 15. What does it mean? We have excess demand here and excess supply, neither market clears. We have to change prices. PY was one, PX is our variable. PX sh should go up or down. What do you think? If demand for the first for X is bigger than the supply and demand for Y is lower than the supply. Which price? I mean, X should go up or down. Down? If... Look, uh, this is the demand for X. This is the supply for X. In market economy, in the demand is bigger than supply, 
what happens to the price? Supply, demand. If demand is bigger, uh, demand is bigger than supply. So the price will increase. Demand is 15, supply is 10. So price must go up to increase supply and decrease demand. Okay. The equilibrium price in this story is 2.2. And if you plug in 2.2 to these equations, you will see that then the supply and demand are the same, 10 and 15. How to find this 2.2? We will discuss that next, next uh, during the next meeting. Okay, so I will upload some exercises. Some of them will be easy. No, some of them you can answer using the presentation we have covered so far. Some of them will be a little bit more difficult. We will discuss them next week. Okay, so let okay. me start right now. Uh, please, can you give us a password for the sober? Uh, what about if I do you want me to upload the presentation on the sobe or Microsoft Teams? Maybe the soap is better. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, wait. Hmm. The password. OK, I will I will type. The, I will let you know the password the sobe through Microsoft Teams. OK, OK, because thank you. So on my so please not 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 tomorrow morning. Please go to Microsoft team teams to our team to to find the materials there and also the password to the sobin. Thank you. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you and see you next week. The beginning of the next week will uh, the lecture will be complicated, even more complicated than today's lecture, but then we lift the microeconomic theory. We will discuss political economy. Uh, later we will discuss um, pension systems and some um, income redistribution, and then we start taxation. Okay, see you. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.